What's up guys, it's Drag, and we've created an impromptu studio to record and film this unboxing and review for you. So this is the, the Zingwei Kui. I've been calling it the S100, which is what I think it's uh, being referred to as. Over here, there's tick marks for, I assume, colors and formats for it. Over here, it says, disclaimer, the package contains important information that must be retained. And that's probably because this one comes to me from my friends over at Monkey Mods, which means that it's technically out of China, which means that it was probably pretty difficult to get through customs. I don't know how you get something that has this, you know, very scar-esque sort of imagery on it all the way out here. So let's go ahead, let's open up the package. And right off the bat, I wanna say that the packaging is pretty smart. We've actually got the uh, the Monkey Mods rifling muzzle. I'm assuming this is their, their proprietary scar, and it looks like that's exactly what it is. Jinxie. Ugh. The joys, the joys of filming with Jay. And then over here, we've got pick rail, more pick rail. It looks like this is the top rail. This is a pretty solid construction. Each one of these uh, these plastic pieces is clearly injection molded. We have a monster uh, plunger tube with a skinny style pusher on it, and uh, pretty pretty solid sort of padding on both ends of it. Double O rings, and then of course this is a an aluminum priming bar, so that's pretty nice. It looks like we have two different springs, two different barrels, one's long, one's short. This is kind of fascinating. The magazine for this blaster uh, is not a worker magazine. It's got a man in a cowboy hat with a spear, which is an unusual combo, man in cowboy hat on horse with spear. Uh, but what's super interesting is that the dart length is not Traditional. It looks like this would take a slightly longer dart than a usual half-length dart. So you could almost call it a three-quarter dart, somewhere between half and full. But we've got a bunch of bits and bobs here, here, here. It looks like their own version of grease. And then we have a muzzle device. Uh, and then in here, you can see that we've got an almost AR-15-esque style lower. The lower assembly is the trigger in it, along with, again, like very M16 AR platform like mag release over here, almost two real steel. It says on this side for the competition. And then on this, it has the same cowboy with harpoon on horse. Very curious what's going on there. Now, the quality of the parts is, is actually pretty terrific. I mean, you've got a isolated adjustable sort of a stock bit here, uh, what appears to be multiple pieces that you use to hook up around the barrel and the receiver and whatnot. This is our foregrip, which appears to be standard pick rail over here. And then a, is this a metal plunger upgrade? Oh, this is the pusher. This is the plunger, and that's how the seal works there, along with uh, eyeglasses that nobody will ever use and a neon orange pump grip, because thank goodness there's a little more orange on this thing. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna jump cut into an assembled blaster. So you might be noticing new outfit, new lighting, uh, new day. That's because this thing does take some time to puzzle together, but it's not your typical clamshell blaster. The overall construction of the blaster is quite solid, pretty robust with it being a bunch of pieces that kind of puzzle together and cinch via these, uh, these aluminum tubes that effectively have set screws that go into them. It's sort of, a, it's sort of wild. The top rail gets assembled and gets set in. Everything is built around the plunger system. There's actually an auto retraction spring in the system. Now it's not quite strong enough to seat the bolt into the barrel, but it's pretty close. You've got these anodized bits here that are essential actually, because they offset the size of the screws onto here, but these become your bandolier attachment points. Now they are ambi, you could put them on either side. I put them on this side, thinking that I would sling it like this. I opted for the longer barrel, and admittedly, out of the three spring options in here, I did put the strongest spring in. Now, I know what I said earlier in the video, but this does take standard half-length darts, which is a huge relief because it makes the most sense. Now, the one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't take a standard half-length kind of magazines, and that's where I think a lot of the confusion was coming from. This is almost like a hybrid between the old worker hex mags where you know you would have a full-length magazine that had a half-length channel inside, this is uh, somewhere in between. It would be like a three-quarter magazine, but it fits traditional half-length darts. Why does it work that way? I think that it's largely for the aesthetics to get this into this sort of form factor where you maintain this sort of real steel 
Esque thing that it has going on. The red anodized aluminum looks good as kind of a trim color. It's certainly my favorite. I think that it would be fine on the smoked out shell as well. So just a real quick recap here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's assume this is a 15 round magazine. Although the way that my springs kinked up, I think that it's safe to say that it's a 14 round magazine. At least that's where we're gonna leave it for right now. Now this is uh, interesting. It's an auto extension for the stock panel here. Two aluminum rods in the back and actually very sturdy with how it fits into the shell. You can of course retract that down. I'm actually tall enough that I'm gonna leave it out, but uh, you've got full pick rail up top. If you wanna go all bolt action, you can put pick rails on the side, but I wanted the pump grip to go with these two bars here. That means that you can prime it pretty comfortably like that, or you could come in and you could do a combination, or if you wanted to, you could rip it like that. And again, this is what I'm talking about when I say that it'll, it'll retract back automatically, but it's not quite uh, perfect. You really need to seat forward a little bit more to get that uh, O-ring on your pusher into there. Now, the last thing that I guess I wanna do is be like, yo, this came with no darts. So huge shout out to Target for just stocking high quality darts. Target is closer to this location than a Walmart would be. So I didn't have to choose. I could just get pro darts uh, while I was out. And it's just, I know I say it a lot, but like, it's so cool to be in a position in the hobby right now where you could just pick up darts when you need them. So because of the skinny pusher, you can throw this in at any point. Note the bolt is uh, closed, but now I've racked the dart into it. Uh, again, I'm gonna seat, just make sure that I'm fully in there because with the strongest spring in here, you can actually see the plunger jutting out the back. That doesn't get impacted by the stock if it's closed, but it's interesting that you see it when it's out like this. Now the catch has a roller, which means that the trigger action is very smooth. With everything else being made of metal, it would be nice if the trigger was metal. You've got this safety mechanism here, which is actually a real bear to install, but I won't get into it. It's a bear to install because once it is installed, it uses a roller ball system, almost like a ballpoint pen, and it's actually quite nice. Uh, but in no, no fire, no fire, and in fire, you get, well, it's 90 feet from fence to fence, and you should be able to watch this. Uh, almost no drop, 90 feet. So uh, while I do not have a ballistic chronograph and I was not prepared necessarily to make this review, I can tell you that it's shooting well over 220 FPS, probably closer to 250, 260. It is a lot of power. The strongest spring that it comes with combined with just the massive like extended long shot style um, plunger tube means that the prime is actually quite stiff. It's a lot even for me. The accuracy of the blaster, while you could attach a standard scar to it, this is not a scar, is quite good at about, you know, 50 feet over there. We have just an interesting target, we'll say. I feel like the wind just picked up. I guess the accuracy leaves a little bit to be desired. This is again the longest barrel and the strongest spring configuration, which might not be ideal. I didn't really do a whole lot of math there, but again, the overall power of the blaster is pretty impressive. When I guess the darts don't whirly bird. The, uh, the S100 is pretty fairly priced. It's pretty comparable to other blasters in this category. That's, you know, you have the, uh, the worker Swift, you have the, not the prophecy, the prophecy is the retaliator. I can never remember what is the, uh, the full scale translucent long shot replacement. I know it wasn't very popular. And I feel like because of this thing's overall aesthetic, it'll be a little bit more popular. The ability to be either bolt action with extra pick rail or pump action or both is certainly a feature that I know a lot of people will pay extra for. There we go. But uh, I like that it's, the magazine release is a little funky. Again, it's a, it's a standard like M16 style magazine release, which is a little wild. It's also not ambi because of that. But overall, I mean, a very solid construction, very familiar sort of control system to this blaster. And uh, a lot of features that I think would be considered premium and certainly would have been very like ultra premium in years before, but a full injection molded shell, a lot of metal parts, including the catch and the plunger tube and the priming bar and the bolt. There's a, there's a lot of things to like about this thing overall. I think that availability right now is pretty limited to monkey mods if you're not gonna get it directly from 
cowboy spear company, um, which I am not familiar with. But I think that the only downside that I can say, because there are a lot of nice things to say about it, would be that, uh, and step out of the wind a little bit for cleaner audio, the proprietary magazine system is gonna be a real bamboozling until somebody comes up with a 3D printed or an adapter insert of some sort, which would be very easy, I have no doubt, but uh, the proprietary magazines are gonna be a big downer. At this point, anyone interested in competitive Nerf already has a handful of talons and probably still has some katanas sitting in a bin somewhere and definitely has you know one or two of the, uh, the DZP or the uh, Adventure Force Pro magazines. And the completely new magazine sort of geometry, which is nowhere near as cross compatible and is very, very late to the market, it's gonna be a pretty big downside for most nerfers, I think. But overall, I, uh, I definitely like it. I dig it, I think that it's cool. I will use it in the SCNC a few times, but again, with only one magazine and the inability to like throw it in a scabbard rig or anything like that, I see that being a huge downside for a lot of competitive players. But if you're willing to adopt this or adapt the Magwell, I think that this uh, system has a lot of merits at a very fair price. So that's just my take on it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. I, uh, I think that it's pretty sweet overall, like I said. I, uh, I wanna know how the, uh, the Adventure Force Pro darts will, I guess these are the, the Max darts, the Pro, target darts, the diamond darts. I feel like I wanna shoot it in the pool just once because I have that option available to me. If you haven't seen my spiral review, uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, it actually does have a lot of power. Where'd the dart go? Did the dart skip? That's kind of funny. Thanks so much for watching. Much love, blast on, Drac out.